Thanks very much. Uh, thanks for staying till the end of the conference. Um, I'd be outside watching the football, I'll have to admit. So thanks very much for bearing with me. And these will be the last words you hear at the conference. So this means you're going to remember them. So that means it's the pressure on me. So let's crack on. So hi, I'm Paul. I am an Android engineer. I've been doing that for some time now. And I'm here to talk about what I've learned about build time over the last, say, 18 months, two years. So I'm an Android software engineer, as I say. I currently work at on the rentalcars.com app for a company called Booking Go, and we're part of Booking.com. I'm sure you've heard of them. Previous life, I spent a lot of time at the BBC, and I worked on BBC iPlayer and BBC iPlayer Radio, so I've done a, I've done a little bit. Um, so yeah, probably never heard of Booking Go before, so just the, uh, the required corporate bit. So we're the ground transportation division of Booking.com. We've got two apps, rentalcars.com and another app called Rideways. So one's for renting the car and one's for having someone drive the car for you. We're based in Manchester in the UK. I'm not, I'm from Liverpool, so that's a bit of a contentious one for me. We are hiring and it doesn't always rain in Manchester, I've been told. So what is this talk? It's my experience with Book and Go Android app over the last six months since I've worked there. My observations from previous companies that I've worked at and it's a plea from me to you to care about your build time and the amount of time you waste waiting for builds. What isn't this talk? It's not a one size fits all answer, I am sorry. I don't have one but Stefan from Gradle was here this morning and he didn't have one either. <laughs> and there's no exact numbers in this talk. I've averaged all my numbers out as best as I can but your mileage may vary as the way that we have to describe this. So, what's wrong with Gradle? It's slow. That's all anyone says, Gradle's slow, and that means a lot of this. I've not seen an XKCD comic at this conference yet, so if I'm the first one, I'm really happy. Maybe I've just missed them. So we sit around, we're waiting for our code to compile, our boss gets annoyed with us because you were sitting there reading blog posts, reading Twitter, and it ruins our flow. I like to keep going, I like to take a break when I want to have a break, not when the computer says I want to have a break. So, what did we start with in January this year when I joined the team? An oldish version of Gradle, I think it's fair to say. Gradle 3.5, Android Gradle plugin from last year, well before Google I.O. last year. One main app module, it's pretty big, and we've got four smallish modules. We put things like networking away into them, so we're starting to move modular, but not really much just yet. Java and Kotlin sources, a lot of Java and a lot of Kotlin, and lots of dependencies, lots of plugins, lots of annotation processes, the same as everyone else who writes an Android app. We don't just write our own code. Three minutes and 20 seconds to do a clean build. I think that's really, really slow. People have laughed at me and said, hey, my build takes 20 minutes. I feel your pain. Mine's relatively quick. <laughs> Change one line in a module, it's still taking nearly two minutes to build. What are we doing for those two minutes? <laughs> so, what did we try? Let's stop complaining, let's see if we can make things better. So, January when I joined the team, let's move the tools to the most recent versions available. So we're saying Gradle 4.4. Latest version of the Android Gradle plugin. We enable parallel tasks. We've got multiple modules. We've got multiple cores on our machine. Let's do as much work as we can at the same time. Turned on the Gradle daemon. We didn't have it turned on. Nobody knows why. Our configuration was old. We had to manually enable it. That gave us a decent speed bump. So nearly a minute off. And the same with a one line change. We can work on that. but. We've not done much here. This was half an hour's work, and we've knocked a minute off every time that we're doing a build. So why has this happened? Like I said, our configuration, we hadn't looked at it. It was just sitting there the way it was. So Gradle's been doing a lot of hard work. Google have been collaborating with them. They're giving us things to reduce this problem. We need to opt in and take advantage. Incrementing compilation is there for Java. That's starting to work a little bit better because annotation processes are moved off the class path, so they're not all getting dumped together, and that's starting to move towards the work that Stefan was mentioning this morning where they can opt in to increment compilation. Compile avoidance, multiple modules. If we don't need to recompile it because the internals haven't changed, we don't need to recompile it. And the Gradle daemon, we don't have to start a new GVM every time we want to make a build. There's a cost associated with that, we've got to address the memory, you know, the JVM's not, you know, it's 25 years, it's still not as fast as it could be. People work on that, but there we go. So, some more time passed, then, there's more new versions available, we've tried some version bumps, let's go to the latest version. So, Gradle 4.4, 3.1.2, these slides are a little while old now, a few weeks old, but that was what we had at the time. We bumped to the latest version of the Kotlin plugin, 
We knocked another 10 seconds off the build. Again, five minutes worth of work. We've knocked 10 seconds off the build. Percentage-wise, that's quite big. I mean, that might have a better impact for you, but it's, it's a win. It's, it's worth doing. It's worth your time. So what's next? Let's see if we can work on that configuration, see if we can get the build time down even more. So what did I try first? I was crazy. Let's change all our PNG resources to WebP. I've read somewhere that PNGs need crunching by apt. It takes a bit of time to do that. We've got a ton of resources in our app. Our artists love PNG files. There's a nice thing in Android Studio that'll do that for you. You can select all your assets. You can press convert to WebP. And no improvements in build time. But shave five mega off our APK, so it was worth doing. <laughs> I could encourage you to use WebP. I can't tell the difference. Try it with your designers, see if they notice the difference. <laughs> what did I do next? Google recommends you do this. Create a dev flavor, and that can take away legacy multidex. We support back to API 16, so we're still using legacy multidex, because like I say, we've got a ton of code. We pop this in our Grail file, so constrain our resources, so we only want the ones from English, and from, I picked double XHDPI, you could pick whichever one you wanted, and SDK 21. Knock another layer of seconds off the build. Again, not much work, less time being spelled building. I like this. So I got a bit crazy. I removed our annotation processes. It wasn't as scary as it sounds. I did it on a spike branch. Didn't take that much time, believe it or not. So what did I try? We had auto value. I took it away 15 seconds off the build time. It was worth doing. It was a little bit laborious, but Ricardo Large gave a really good talk yesterday about migrating to Kotlin data classes, which is exactly what I did. I didn't use his nifty tool that he's uh, started to work on. Um, so check out his GitHub. That looks like a really useful thing. Like you can convert all the uh, auto value classes to Kotlin data classes. Obviously, you need to be using Kotlin, but that might save you some time. I got rid of butter knife. We were using butter knife and Kotlin files. I don't know why. I switched to the Kotlin synthetic. Four and a half seconds off the build. Not really much difference in the syntax as far as I'm concerned. I haven't got to do fine view by ID. Everything's reasonably nice. Getting rid of a bit more time. And then I had to go through and take button knife out of all of our Java files. And now they've got fine view by ID calls in them. But you can fold it away. IntelliJ will just fold away that block of code for you. You don't have to see it again. I think I'd rather have the boilerplate. And if you care that much, you can write a script and IntelliJ can do it for you. Build cache. Stefan talked a lot about build cache this morning. We turn the build cache on a minute and 40 seconds off our build. So it's taken 45 seconds now to do a clean build. And if you remember back to the earlier slide, it's taken three and a half minutes. The build cache is good. So what's it doing? It will cache the input of a task against the output. So the beauty of this is that you don't have to do the build. Someone else can do it for you. Oh, I need to talk about this. I said 45 seconds off our, it was a clean build. But when you made a no-op change, so I didn't change any code around the same build again, it was still taking 45 seconds. And then I went to Stefan's talk this morning, and he told me to do this, disable Crashlytics, and I did. Just put this in, five-second build. Crashlytics was taking 40 seconds every single time because it was doing some things that I don't quite understand. Why do we need it in dev builds? I don't think we do. Turn it off. Look like hair clop. So I was talking about the remote build cache. So we don't get a huge value of this at the moment. We've got it set up. The reason we don't get much value out of it, I've been doing a lot of work on my own recently. The team's starting to expand now, so maybe we'll seem to get more value out of this. But the developer can sit there and they can populate their local cache, or the continuous integration server can populate a remote cache. I can pull from that. I can come in in the morning, get all the latest work on a different branch, on the developed branch that other people have built for me, and I don't have to sit there and build it. That's good. Where can you get one from? We have Artifactory at our, at our organization. We're a big Java backend, so we have Art Artifactory. That'll do it for you. Gradle will provide you with a Docker image. It's actually free. They have Gradle Enterprise as well. If you're already paying for that, you'll be able to take advantage of that. If you've got a bit of time to spare from all the time you're saving with your builds, you can roll your own. The docs are here. I recommend you read them. They're really good. So these are some things that are on our, our radar to try. Can we go even faster? More modules. This has been talked about a lot at this conference and at other conferences, but it stands to reason. The more that you can put in the cache, the more that you can avoid compilation, the less you need to spend building. More modules can do that for you. Also, JVM modules build faster than Android modules. So let's have more JVM modules and less Android modules. You might end up with a sprawl of modules, but you'll get used to it. 
and it'll also enforce separation of concerns. So we're talking about model view presenter. Uh, JVM modules are really easy to test. Put all of your presenters, all of your views, or keep all your views in your Android modules, keep everything else separate. You can just work on the module that you're working on at the time and just recompile that. Work, get your, work against your unit tests. Test-driven development, it's good. Write more Kotlin and write less Java. Now, I shamelessly stole this slide from a talk that Jake, Jake Wharton gave. I'm sure everyone knows the way the Kotlin compiler works, is that you pass in Kotlin source files and Java source files to the Kotlin compiler so it can link against the two. It only spits out class files for Kotlin files, so everything that came in that was Java has to go into the Java compiler as well, so everything is being processed twice in a mixed mode compilation module. That's going to waste some time. So if you're in this situation, move all of that module to Kotlin. Don't use Kotlin at all, because that time is just being wasted, and obviously I want you to move everything to Kotlin. <laughs> that's up to you. <laughs> so change your workflow. That's something else we can try. I mentioned with TDD, let's just work in the module that we need to work in, and let's, let's stand that up under test. If we've got an activity that's in a specific module, just work on that module. Pull it out into a sample app and just keep yourself away from the rest of your huge application. You can fold it back in later when you're done working. Get a faster computer. <laughs> it's a really good excuse to say to your boss, can I have some more money for a new computer? My computer's relatively slow and it's from 2016. And we've got other computers in the office that are much, much faster. When you tell them how much time you're wasting and how much faster you'll go, they're going to buy you a new computer. This project looks really interesting. You can hand off your build tasks. There's an IntelliJ plugin. Hand off your build tasks to a remote machine and let the remote machine do the build for you. So if you've got a Chromebook, it's not got much power or something like that, use this. Get yourself a Google Compute Engine or AWS instance. Do your compilation on there. And pull all the results back. It looks really, really good. I've not used it enough, but it does look really promising. I'd encourage you to check it out. You can try Flutter. Everyone likes it. hot deploy on Flutter. That's going to be a bit more of a challenge to, uh, to convince the, uh, the upper people. But you know, it's there, and the workflow is absolutely amazing. I've tried it. It's great. It feels really sad coming back to Android, and you have to wait all this time. So where did I get all this information from? Just the Gradle profiler. So Stefan mentioned build scans before that are a bit more advanced to this. But if you took dash dash profile on the end of your Gradle command, you'll get an HTML report like this. And it'll give you a list of everything that's come from the cache everything that hasn't come from the cache, and how much time each thing's taken. And you can look down into these tasks and see what's taking the time, and you can find out why that time's being wasted. This view's pretty much in Android Studio now as well, so when you press play in Android Studio, if you don't like the command line, you get a build tab, and you're still getting the times there, and it will say from cache or no op, and it'll be able to do the same thing there, so you don't even have to go out into a web browser. Like I say, Stefan mentioned build scans this morning. I won't bother going into detail here, but the docs are here. And Stefan's talk's really detailed on build scans, so I'd encourage you to check it out. Now, I did promise that I would mention Bazel. I haven't got a huge amount to say on Bazel, so I, haven't got, I say I haven't got all the answers, unfortunately. But I, I did a spike of a couple of days just to see what we could do and see if it was any faster. So I'm sure you all know it's an open source version of Google's internal tool, Blaze. And it's famed for fast, repeatable builds, I think they say. So is it worth a try? Like I can say, I gave it a couple of days and see what I could do. Well, every Android problem project has dependencies. Ours is no different. Bazel doesn't support transitive dependencies. This is really difficult when you're trying to use something like Retrofit, which pulls in OK to HTTP. That's just one example. This is no fun trying to port an Android project. So open source rule, there's an open source rule available that will pull in Maven transitive dependencies, but you have to pull that into your Bazel build yourself. But it doesn't support AAR dependencies, it only supports JARs. And this is no fun trying to port an Android project. Kotlin. The official Kotlin rules are actually forked from an open source project. The, op the official rules do support mixed mode compilation, so Java and Kotlin in the same project, but the unofficial ones wouldn't do this. Now the problem here, is that the official Android rules don't easily support putting their output into an Android compile task. There's a workaround needed. So this is feeling a little bit not quite right for me at the moment, not quite ready, not something I'd recommend. So it seems difficult at this point to port something over. Individual modules, they do seem to build at similar speeds. I wouldn't say they were hugely different, but that's only based on our four small modules that I was talking about, because in the two days, I just couldn't get our whole system compiled over, so I could only test the individual modules, unfortunately. 
There is an IntelliJ plugin for, for, uh, for Bazel. It doesn't work in Android Studio 3.1, unfortunately. It is going to be fixed in Android Studio 3.2. So I think all I can say at this point is I'm really interested to look at this. This is like next time I press file, new project, and start from scratch. But do I fancy porting over our entire app and spending a week on that? I can't recommend that at the moment, unfortunately. So to summarize, does all this matter? So how many times, how many times do you build each day? Let's say 10. So 10, three minutes, it's half an hour a day. It's two and a half hours a week. Bring this down to half a minute, that's just 25 minutes each week. So the time sailings do add up. You need to decide whether these are worth the cost. So if it's a two line change to your build script, I'd say that's worth the cost. If you have to spend six weeks removing butter knife, that's up for you to decide. So build tools, they're not fit and forget. We were guilty of this, I'm sure other people are guilty of this. You start with the sample, pro the sample project from Android Studio, it gives you a build file, but it just sits and gets dusty. Gradle isn't magic. It needs maintenance. It needs consistent updating to make sure you're using the latest features. I worked on a project that had ProGuard enabled by default on the dev builds. So we were wasting time obfuscating the code that was just going onto the simulator. This is what happens when we don't pay attention to our build files. If you need a nudge, if things are getting slow, stick it into your CI workflow. Make your CI go orange or even red. If it takes a certain amount of time to make a build, then it's someone's problem. Everyone fixes broken builds. Let's say that a slow build's a broken build. Mixing Java and Kotlin means slower builds. So write no Kotlin or write all Kotlin. One Kotlin file is going to be really, really slow in amongst a lot of Java. Optimize your work environment. Use a real device instead of an emulator. The emulator takes up, what, between two and three, four gig. It's memory that you could apply elsewhere to Android Studio for when it's indexing or to Gradle for actually running the builds. Get a faster machine. Use a remote build tool like Mainframer. They look really useful. Ask your boss for a new computer. Tell him I sent you. They'd probably say yes. Other options may be faster. Bazel, even Book, might be faster in certain circumstances. But there's not so much support. You can look at a huge amount of documentation from Gradle. Everybody knows Gradle is built into the Android tool chain. It's really well supported. Ask the right questions. You will get answers. You will make your bill go faster. Here's a couple of references that I've, um, I've mentioned in this talk. So Android Studio as a optimize your build, that's pretty useful. And obviously the Gradle documentation, or I'm sure you can reach out to Steph and other guys at Gradle, and they'll be more than happy to help. Like I say, there was two other really good talks on build today. If you've missed them, I would recommend you check them out when the organizers get the videos up on the DroidCon website. So let's do less of this. I'm really bored of doing this. I want to do less of this. I want to do more of this. I'm sure all of you do too. So like I say, my name's Paul. Thank you very much for your attention. And I've been nice and quick so we can catch the end of the football. But if there's any questions, I'm happy to take some questions. Thank you very much. So you already know how it works right now after three days. So if there are any questions, just ask them. So all the, t all the times from when I was putting negative numbers, they were all clean builds. Yeah, and the reason I did that was because incremental builds can take a variable amount of time. Yeah, well, let's, let, let's, let's do it, but I'll have to send you a bill. <laughs> no, but we can talk later and see what we can do. Um, there are some, some really obvious things that people just haven't done, and it's really worthwhile having a look. Most of these things that you said, and they're there. Really? Maybe I've got lucky. I hope not. I hope this is all well researched, but maybe I've got lucky. Let's, let's talk. Or you a better computer. Anyone else got any questions or any discussion that we want to have? I mean, does anyone want to help any, anyone else out here? Because you know, if we're all sitting here struggling with, with slow builds, then I'm sure we can help each other out. Nice and quiet, that's good. Right, thanks, thanks very much for having me, and I hope you all enjoyed DroidCon, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks very much. <laughs>